Here it is. The Uliphone Note 7. So this is one of the cheapest phones I have seen in quite some time. It's got quite a few half decent specs. So I'll just run you through what it says on the back. So with this it's got a water drop screen, a MT6580 quad core processor, one gigabyte of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage, face unlock, triple camera, which is not something you normally see on cheap uh, devices like this, 6.1 inch HD display, the resolution of 1280 by 600, so a bit lower than uh, what we used to, and a 3500 mAh battery, and it comes with Android 9 Pie Go Edition, right out of the box. So, speaking of the box, let's see what's in it. Here we go. So, we get this, which is a spare screen protector. It does come with one pre-applied. Uh, so, quite useful. I've got a, a spare. And it comes with a load of manuals, so a quick guide. Usual Uliphone business, just a couple of fairly simple, straightforward instructions. It's actually only three pages, this one. Um, so not even as much as you normally get. Warranty card, so you can fill that in and get your warranty and your date of purchase etc. And instructions of phone charging which we've seen in other Uliphone devices. Um, so it's just, it's basically just telling you that when you first get the phone you need to give it a bit of a charge um, otherwise it can take a while to switch on if you forget to do it. I know this because I didn't follow the instructions. You get a charger, just one amp on this one, very slow, charging cable, got micro USB, no USB-C yet on these cheap devices, got a flexible case for the device, and we of course get the phone, which I've got the, uh, I guess it's a, a sort of purpley colour. So the first thing that jumps out on this device is this beast on the back. So we've got one, two, three cameras and a flash. Very impressive for this uh, price. And <coughs> on the side, it's got nothing on that side. At the bottom we've got a USB charging port and a little microphone area. Got a lock button, volume rocker. Seems quite... Um, Got quite a nice texture to that lock button. It's got a bit of a grip on it. Up the top, we've got my favourite, the headphone jack. And on the back, other than the cameras, we've got a speaker there. So it's in a bit of a strange place. I'd imagine you you'd be covering that up quite a bit. But I guess the sound could sort of bounce off your hand, maybe. One other uh, interesting feature with the phone is in the bottom corner there. You'll see there's a bit of a notch. Now if we uh, put our nail down there and we move it around a little bit, let's see what we've got. So you can actually get into the phone there and you will see there is a SIM slot and a another SIM slot uh, which also you can put a uh, micro SD card in this one. So it is either or, you either have one SIM and a micro SD, or two SIMs and no micro SD, or nothing, <laughs> like I've got here. Absolutely nothing in it. So the battery, I don't think it would be too difficult to replace it, looks like you'd probably just unscrew some of the screws around the edge, and it'll probably come out, uh, but to be honest with you, the price of this phone, you're probably not going to be that bothered about replacing the battery once it's... Uh, past its sell by date, so we'll put that back on. Here we go, so face unlock is not particularly secure, it's just done with the uh, the camera, the front facing camera there. So we've got Android Go installed on here, I'm not a massive fan of Android Go, uh, I get why it's, it's a thing, it does take up a lot less space uh, on a, a device with hardly any storage space to begin with, uh, and it does come with the option of using apps that are a little bit lighter than uh, the fully blown apps. 
So let's have a look what's pre-installed. So I've put Asphalt 8 on there to test a little bit of gaming. Asphalt 9 wouldn't install, uh, I'm guessing because of the amount of RAM in this. But you get a lot of the Go apps, you get like Assistant, you get uh, Gallery, you get Gmail, you get Maps, Google Go. Um, pretty much all the, uh, the standard Go apps. You can actually remove them and install the full Big Brother apps if you uh, if you so wish. Um, but yeah, just scrolling and things on the phone. It's it's not the greatest in terms of speed, but it's okay. Um, I don't think this is going to be particularly great at running games and that kind of thing. But for now, it's uh, it seems an okay phone. We've got very much stock Android, there's no light sensor on it so if you want to change the brightness you got to do it manually and it'll just stay at whatever whatever you have it set at. So if we look at the storage that we have left on it, we've got 1.6 gigabytes of other apps, that's uh, Asphalt 8. So if you add that on you're looking at about what 7.74 gigabytes of usable space. It doesn't seem that much really. Um, considering it's got Android Go on there, but never mind. 16 gigabytes is a small amount. So let's have a uh, have a go at some gaming. See how it performs. So here we go. We'll take a look at some gameplay. Looks a bit jittery already. Um, bear in mind this game's about seven years old now. Uh, that's uh, yeah, a little bit. Hmm. I mean, te technically, it's playable, but just, <laughs> uh, yeah, not not the greatest. It's not not really for three D games. This phone. Yeah, we must be getting about ten frames per second most of the time here. Possibly a bit more. When there's not as much going on, but yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend playing games on this. Quite like the uh, the camera on the front, so how it's uh, just the uh, the little cut out there. Uh, and I, I will be, uh, I will in a moment just uh, bring up some images that I've taken with the various cameras on here. So just going into the camera app first. So if you remember, it's got four cameras in total. So there's this one, and then round the other side, we've got uh, the other two. So it actually appears as though, so we've got a HD camera. So on this mode, it says that you shouldn't move the image when you're taking it. So I'm assuming this is the, the higher resolution camera. Full specs are, are below in the description, by the way. Uh, and then if we go video, I think that, that's the second camera. Uh, it's it's really not good the uh, the video recording as you'll see in a moment. Uh, it's only 720p, and then we've got the photo mode. So on this one, we can switch AI on, uh, and well, it slows it right down for starters. So we can't use AI and HDR. But we can use HDR on its own. Um, so, hmm, yeah, rather uh, rather interesting. So I think that's the use of the three forward facing cameras. With the portrait mode, I'll just find a, an object to take a picture with and we'll do it on uh, on here. So I'll just get my, my keyboard in the background. Just get a nice little beep when it finds focus. So I'm just out, out of the shot a little bit there, I'll just bring it back in for you. It's going to be quite tricky getting this right. This is a selfie just taken in natural light uh, inside. As you can see, the, the image quality is terrible. Uh, that's really disappointing. And then, <clears throat> this is a shot taken with the HD mode on. And then I've taken the same shot without the HD mode on. So you get a wider shot with less detail. So this this leads me to the conclusion that it's using a different camera to the HD mode. 
This is just a, a quick video, uh, similar shot actually, uh, just showing you what, what it's like. So really, really not good quality. Um, it's just really stuttery image, nothing smooth about it. And it's only 720p. Very slow autofocus as well. So we're in 2020 now, and we're still seeing phones like this one with just one gig of RAM. We're actually getting newer models with 12 times that amount. So I think the the bottom end of the the phone market is kind of a bit too bottom end now. The, this phone in particular, it's got some nice design features. The, I like the idea of the 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 four cameras, but it's just badly executed. Android Go is just not brilliant. Uh, it, it's, it lacks some of the uh, the more finer refinements in the in the settings menu, that kind of thing. Um, the bezels around the screen are massive. It's nice to see that you can potentially replace the battery on this, but I can't imagine many people will. It's a good little touch to get a free case. It's always nice to see, and to be honest with you, I think the uh, the colours are alright. I mean, it's a very plasticky phone on the front and the back, but it looks pretty snazzy. I'd I'd potentially use this as a sort of um, social media managing kind of device. So obviously not for taking pictures or videos to share, but potentially doing things like messaging your your base that kind of thing. Or just interacting on Twitter, Facebook, any any of the platforms that are a bit less demanding. If you want the lowest common denominator phone that's got a secure operating system, and this phone's definitely the one to go for. Just don't take any photographs that you want to keep for a long time on it, because you will be disappointed. It's just the cameras are just not there really. It would have been much better to just have one camera on this side of the phone and one higher quality camera so that the images we're getting are a lot better. The, op the options for for changing the focal length, that kind of thing, you don't want it on this sort of phone. It, it, it's just a point and shoot if you're going to take photos at all. Something this phone might be good for is potentially to give to a youngster who wants to watch cartoons etc because uh, in terms of playing media it'll be okay it'll do the job you might not get an amazing resolution but let's face it if all you're using the phone for is to give it to your kids to to watch some television then it's fine you can install YouTube kids it's got parental controls built in um, so you know it's alright for that just don't expect to be playing uh, PUBG or Call of Duty Mobile or anything of that high standard on here because that is just not ever going to happen. Last time I checked on Amazon, this, this sort of price point, there's not many phones left that are going for that price. I'm starting to see the middle, middle of the road phones kind of creep down in price around the £100 mark, which is nice to see. And it is worth paying that extra few quid just to get something that is just going to be a little bit better for taking photos and potentially playing some games. That's it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't yet subscribed, then please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.